How's it going, fellas? Are you not entertained? Bubba Bam! Okay, sorry. I had to get that in quick. <laughs> Did I blow your eardrums out? I apologize. It's a little bit of a TD Barrett shout out. I've been really enjoying his content lately on YouTube. You guys don't need to be into him. He's a Madden YouTuber. So, yeah, I know. Get your booze out of the way. I hear it. Rain them on me. I enjoy Madden. It is what it is. All right, folks. Um, we have some amazing Switch news for you today. Four big stories. Some really interesting things seem to be happening, including a rumor. Uh, a rumor around Switch pricing of this thing back here. That expansion pass. Now, I will give proper credit to where this stuff is coming from. And again, I'm not so sure if I believe it, but it is something that I think is worth talking about. Uh, along with some updates on Metro Dread sales, we got some news on Monster Hunter Rise. Uh, and yeah, a new feature that Nintendo added to Nintendo Switch without ever announcing it. And I kind of noticed it, but didn't think much of it uh, until I started remembering this actually wasn't something that was possible on Nintendo Switch before and actually makes your Switch more secure while making things a lot easier on us. So we got a lot to get into. Uh, before we do, I wanna remind you, we are giving away three copies of this game right here. You guys see it? Oh, you know, it's Dreadtober, baby. It's Metroid Dread. We got three copies of this game being given away this month. Uh, you do need to be subscribed like you need to be for all of our giveaways. Um, I should have something special set up for this here by the end of the week so you guys can understand how these copies will be given away. But we are giving away three of them and I haven't beat the game yet. So people wanna know, I've had a number of people asking my impressions on the game. I don't have final impressions yet. Just hold on to your butt cheeks. I'm getting there. I'm probably about a little over halfway through. Uh, hopefully we'll be done with it, maybe even today. Uh, get an impression video out tomorrow. I'm pretty excited about that. It's all good. Now, I did announce on Twitter as well uh, that my family is going through a bit of a bout of COVID. No, nobody's like super sick or anything, mild coughs and all that. Um, we're getting, waiting on some test results here to see if it has cleared out officially or not. Uh, we don't suspect that it has. We're probably about next week sometime it should be cleared out of our house. But uh, because of that, I'm not super confident we're going to be doing the Nintendo Prime podcast tomorrow night like we normally do. I just want to throw that out there, uh, that it's an in-person podcast, and uh, if the test doesn't come back the way that we hope it is, I don't want to, you know, accidentally expose Eric uh, and get that all spread around to his family and anyone that he works with. Uh, but it's possible we could still do some sort of remote thing, maybe bring in some special guests uh, from outside of the channel that can help fill out the slate. I'm still going to be available, planning to still do a live stream. In fact. Yesterday, last night, uh, we didn't do a live stream like I originally planned. For those who don't know, I usually do a live stream on Mondays. Uh, that's just because I had some family stuff to deal with and college work and all that. But, but, tonight, we are going to make up for it and be doing a live stream tonight. So you're going to want to tune into that uh, and see what happens. That being said, let's get right into today's Nintendo news. All right, folks, the tinfoil hat is out because we got some rumors for you to talk about some juicy ones here about the pricing. Now, Nintendo is supposed to announce the pricing for the expansion pack that includes the N64 and Sega Genesis later this month. But my friend over at Nintendo Academy put up a video where he is right now the source. He has someone that he's talking to, but um, he is the source at the moment for possible pricing structure for Nintendo Switch Online. And let's just say, if this is the pricing structure for the expansion pack, I'm not happy. I'm gonna take this off. It's actually kind of digging into me a bit. Dang it, Nate, you didn't make the hat big enough. Or my head grew. Am I getting fatter? I don't know, you guys let me know. I feel like I'm losing weight. I've been refusing to step on the scale the last few weeks. You guys let me know uh, if I'm still looking fresh as always. All right, so uh, here's the thing. Um, right now, the current pricing structure uh, is, you know, for the standard is, is, is if you want one month, of the normal Nintendo Switch Online service, it's $3.99. If you want three months, it's $7.99. If you want one year for an individual, it's $19.99. Or you can get like a family pass for $34.99, which you have like six or eight people. I can't remember the exact max on that. It's a great way to just team up with a bunch of buddies or family members or children uh, that you might have and just get the Nintendo Switch Online service uh, for relatively cheap. The thing is, this service includes online play for any paid game on Switch. All free to play games have free online uh, but if it's a paid game, whether from a third party or Nintendo, you have to have the service to play online. Uh, it also gives you access to all the capabilities of the phone app, which is really like two games that have voice chat. Otherwise, besides that, it's pretty pointless. Um, 
It also uh, gives you access to NES and SNES games. And Nintendo obviously announced at the last Nintendo Direct they're gonna add N64 games and Sega Genesis games. And we're gonna get pretty frequent updates, at least for the N64, uh, over the next year. And the thing is, um, they said that was gonna come as an expansion pack. And they said pricing to be announced later and it should be out by the end of this month. So it is something to look forward to this month. And we have potential pricing structure here from Nintendo Academy. Again, rumor city, don't necessarily believe this, but let's get into it in case this is correct, because if it is, I think Nintendo is um, overshooting themselves because it's already arguable the current price for Nintendo Switch Online isn't necessarily worth it. In fact, if Nintendo got rid of the fact that you have to be a Nintendo Switch Online member to play games online, and then obviously got rid of all the games they have that are popular online, like Smash and Mario Kart and all that, um, then I don't know that people would be subscribed anyways. So yeah, it's kind of a low value proposition. I know you don't pay much for it. I don't know that adding N64 and Genesis magically makes it worth what these prices are, but here are the structure according to Nintendo Academy. Uh, for one month, uh, it's still gonna be $3.99, but if you wanna add on the expansion pass, so you want the base set with the expansion pass, so you want everything all together for a month, it jumps to $9.99. That's a $6 increase just to add a couple platforms that you might not even play all the time i get n64 games online sounds like fire but still six dollar increase per month that's more than double what one month costs now that doesn't make sense to me all right for three months it goes from 7.99 to 14.99 which is obviously a better deal that's only a seven dollar increase uh if for one year supposedly again this is just a rumor it goes from 19.99 to 39.99, a $20 increase. And for the family plan, it goes from 34.99 to 59.99. Now again, these are optional upgrades. You don't have to get this more expensive tier, but if you want Genesis and then 64, you do. That to me is way off base. Because once you get to the point where you're paying for a family plan for 60 bucks, that's exactly what Xbox and PlayStation charge you. And you get modern games on the current generation of hardware thrown in. We're talking about games that are 20, 30 something years old here. This doesn't make sense to me for them to be doing this at this price point. I hope these price points are incorrect. I hope Nintendo is not valuing N64 and Genesis so highly. Maybe to get Genesis, they had to do these kind of price points because there's a significant cut going to Sega. I don't know. Again, these are just rumored price points, but I think these price points are a massive mistake which I already think the expansion pass and charging more for it is already a mistake because again, Nintendo Switch Online service as it is, is not a very good value proposition. Uh, and then more than doubling or just directly doubling the cost doesn't make sense to me. I mean, the one month is more than doubling. Everything else is basically doubling the price. I think that is a mistake, even with online capabilities added in. I, maybe you're going to go out there on the whim and say, yeah, but you remember what we spent per game on N64 VC in the past? Sometimes we were spending $10, $15, $20 per game on prior virtual consoles for N64 games. I get that, all that, but I also have to tell you that you can only play these games when you're online, and it just doesn't make sense um, to me. I don't think there's enough value there to be charging that kind of money when you don't have local voice chat. You have no way to message people. Right, like this is insane that we're in 2021 and don't have these options. Now you're gonna charge even more when your online hasn't even improved. You have these new online servers, but we haven't seen them actually applied to a Nintendo game. Maybe the new Mario Party game coming up here will be the first one to actually take advantage of it from Nintendo side. We don't want Star to Rise is using those servers, but still uh, Nintendo's online has left a lot to be desired. And I think these price points would really piss a lot of people off. I don't think Genesis and N64 are worth that kind of money. Some people will inevitably pay. I'll probably at least pay for a year just to check them out. Uh, but I definitely don't see myself renewing that expansion pass and I'll probably just keep the base membership so I can continue to play games online. Still, um, it's just a rumor. So this could be way off base and Nintendo might be charging significantly less. Again though, I wouldn't put these price points past Nintendo. But when you have one of the packages with everything, you know, approaching $59.99, that's the price points of other platforms. And those other platforms provide a hell of a lot more for that price. It'd be very Nintendo of Nintendo to do this. At least when they said, you know, hey, 20 bucks a year, 35 for family in the past, we could at least say, yeah, you don't get as much, but you're not paying as much. 
but not when you're approaching paying just as much. I'm not so sure that these games are worth it. Now, if they throw GameCube into the mix and Wii, that's a whole different story. Game Boy Advance in the mix, Game Boy, Game Boy Color. Like, if they had, you know, seven different systems as part of all this, that'd be one thing, but uh, they don't. They're just adding two more in addition to the two they currently have, which already don't feel like it's worth the price of it. So, it is what it is. We'll have to wait and see for Nintendo's official announcement. I don't think we'll do any more pricing rumors uh, like this until that happens because it should be happening it, literally any day now if not this week maybe next week so next up we have an update on uh, monster hunter rise so the pc version is coming out in early next year and we obviously have the major sunbreak dlc arriving next summer and obviously we have the recent announcement that over 7.5 million people have bought monster hunter rise on switch which is incredible it's well on pace to hit 10 million in sales just on switch alone uh, but one thing that would be really cool for Rise, obviously, as it comes out on PC, is PC and Switch can sometimes work together really, really well. All you need to do is have cross-save functionality, and you could obviously take your game from PC and play it on the go on Switch, and then transfer your save back and play it on PC when you're at home. This is actually a great way to enjoy Monster Hunter Rise, and there are a number of third-party titles that have actually taken advantage of this possibility with Switch. Now, I know, obviously, we have Steam Deck coming out, which will make this you know perfectly seamless you don't need to add any special ability in to make that work because it's literally just steam but still um it's a feature that i think is pretty respectable to just expect when third parties have done it um i'll give you a great example the witcher 3 you can literally transfer your save file from switch to good old games or steam and back and forth as long as your steam and good old games version of the witcher 3 is up to date it has to be the most recent update for the game it can't be an older version really not that big of an ask and works perfectly fine for people trying to transfer saves back and forth in fact it makes the witcher 3 on switch infinitely more justifiable well the team behind monster hunter came out on twitter to address this and they basically said the following um unfortunately after looking at it during development cross save functionality will not be supported with switch and pc um i find this to be extremely disappointing by the way when third party companies are doing it, but a company that made a timed exclusive from the ground up for Switch that has seen this level of success isn't willing to, I would have rather seen it won't be supported at launch, but we will continue to look into it to at least say that they're going to look into it. It kind of just seems like they never thought about cross save functionality from day one, which doesn't make sense to me not to think about it when you knew it was gonna come to PC later and you probably figured it was gonna sell well on Switch. Um, I understand that there could be some concerns, of course, that in the past, Monster Hunter games on PC have had an issue with, I, I guess you call it cheating. It's their game. They can do what they want. Uh, but there is a lot of save file editing for Monster Hunter games that happen on PC where you can give yourself all these different weapon sets that you never earned. And they could be worried that this could unbalance the game on Switch by a player doing, you know, sending their save over to PC. They edit that save file and then bring that save file back into Switch. And when they do that, that could obviously give you an advantage for Switch Online. But it's not a game that you're playing against others. It's a game you play with others to take down monsters. So I'm not really sure. It doesn't really ruin competitive balance if that's what we're worried about because it's not really a competitive game in the traditional sense. So again, I would rather them see them say, hey, we're gonna work on a way to lock down the save files so they can't be edited and that they're going to allow this rather than just outright saying, yeah, we're not doing it. Now, I give them some credit for at least shooting this down early, not letting it linger into the launch of the PC version where people wonder if it's going to be possible. So yeah, you do get credit for being transparent, but I don't really think there's a good excuse not to do it. Just my personal thoughts on this. You guys let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. All right, next up, we do have an update on the Metroid Dread sales we reported on yesterday. So Christopher Dring yesterday told us that, you know, it was the best selling uh, Metro game of, of all time in the UK just based on physical sales and I guess he was sent some incorrect information he made a correction late yesterday uh, and here it says I've just had an update from GFK Metroid Dread actually isn't the fastest selling Metroid that remains Metroid Prime on the GameCube however it's less than a thousand units uh, with digital Dread almost certainly is the also notes oh, oh sorry um, is it, 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 his his tweet cut off Basically, what he's saying is with digital, Metro Dread almost certainly is the best selling Metroid of all time. So back, the original Metro Prime on GameCube didn't have digital sales. So the fact that the physical sales of Metro Dread are less than a thousand units behind Metroid Prime pretty much says that 
the news was still correct, but it's correct when digital sales are counted in. Uh, he did note in a follow-up tweet that it's actually also the highest grossing launch for Metroid regardless, which I find that to be very interesting because I wonder if that high gross includes digital sales because I think Metroid Prime was a $60 game. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I remember on GameCube it being 60 bucks. At least that's what I paid for it. Uh, so if it was behind that and only physical sales are known, I don't know how that would be higher grossing then when they're both $60. But maybe they can track the money the game has made and that can include digital sales more so than, than they can track unit sales individually. I don't know. This is kind of a weird thing for me, but it sounds like Metro Dread news yesterday is still correct. You just have to throw digital in. I just wanted to update that so we're fully transparent on those sales data and we're not misleading you. Uh, I'm really excited for Thursday this week because we actually get real raw numbers from Japan, from Famitsu. Uh, it's going to be wonderful. I can't wait. Uh, or maybe it'll be disappointing. Maybe Metroid Drive flopped. I have no idea. Our, our last story um, deals with uh, some maintenance that happened on Switch. So, look, I normally don't pay attention to, oh, the, the, the Switch is down for maintenance. Last night it kind of sucked. I wanted to download Hulu because uh, we were going to watch some Hulu on the Switch OLED because it's an OLED screen. Hello, it's going to look fantastic, better than my little tiny iPhone. Here's the thing. Um, we couldn't download Hulu because the eShop was down for maintenance. But this is something that happened before this maintenance. It happened earlier around the time OLED came out. Um, so after Switch's online stuff went down for maintenance for a little bit, when it came back up, this just flew under the radar and Nintendo didn't even announce it. You can now log into the Nintendo Switch eShop with your phone. Yeah, folks, with your phone. It is now an option to log in with your phone. Now you might say, what's the big deal? Why not just type in your password? Well, here's the thing. Obviously, when you see things like the Twitch mega leak where passwords, user accounts, logins, money, everything else was just leaked. Everything from Twitch was leaked, including apparently a list of uh, Twitch you know, streamers that aren't allowed to be banned, which technically isn't supposed to exist according to Twitch's rules, but I guess it does. Bottom line is that, uh, yeah, obviously some people might be worried about the security of their account. So they might want to use a lot more complex um, characters. And to do that can be a bit of a pain using a digital keyboard. Plus you got to memorize it and all this jazz. Whereas our phones have encryption and all this other stuff happening where you can save certain passwords to your phone and know that they're pretty well protected by multiple walls of encryption. So it is kind of nice to just use a phone to log into things, even though it's not ideal. I know some people hate setting up new Xbox series systems with their phone as an example, but also it's really not that big of a deal. I think it's just Microsoft trying to get you into the Xbox ecosystem with their phone app. Now, here's the thing. Uh, what happens is when it brings up the login, when you choose to log in with your mobile device, it'll bring up a QR code. You use your phone, your phone will pop you off to the Nintendo website. And if you have all your passwords saved on your phone, it's one tap, bam, you're in, and it logs you in on Switch. This is super convenient, and it's something they have had when it came to linking accounts to new systems and transferring data. You've been able to do this for a while, but you couldn't actually log into the eShop doing this. Now you can, and I think that is an excellent addition, and kudos to Nintendo for allowing it. It's just an option. Nobody has to use it. You might not think it's a big deal, but in wake of obviously that Twitch Giga Leak, I think a lot of people are looking at trying to implement more complicated passwords on platforms like Nintendo Switch, or maybe they were using something more simplified. I know for me personally, the password I was using for Nintendo Switch Online for a long time was the same password I used for my Wi-Fi at home. Yeah, not exactly super secure and smart, Nate, I know, but I wanted it to be something simple that I could type in no problem, no matter where I was. Uh, without thinking about it uh, and now I'm actually have changed it to a completely random password that I don't even know and is only stored on my phone um, and I can still password recover if my phone breaks or, or whatever happens is that that all still works so yeah um, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this functionality it makes my switch more secure makes it even less likely my kids accidentally purchase things and I'm pretty stoked in general so um, yeah thanks Nintendo for giving us a feature that I don't think every platform has it but correct me if I'm wrong um, I, I don't, I, I know you can log in with Xbox, but I, I can't remember if PlayStation has that functionality. Um, since I got rid of my PlayStation 5, I'm not sure someone's going to have to go check for me. By the way, I plan to get a new PlayStation 5, guys. Don't worry about that. But anyways, whew, I'm Nintendo Rubble Chance from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in. And you know what? I'll catch you guys all in the next video.